In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to carve a Santa's tray for the holidays. One of these guys. If this is something that interests you, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this video. What's going on guys, this is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. In this video, I wanna share with you how to carve the Santa's tray. Normally, I like to show you how to design or create your own designs, but in this video, we're only gonna be focusing on the carve itself. And the reason being is that it can take a lot of time to try to design one of these things if you don't have already the SVG files and the time and the know-how on how to create something like this. I don't have the time right now to be able to invest in creating something like this. And when it's only a dollar or two dollars to get anywhere from 10 to 20 different designs, you know, it just makes sense to spend a couple of dollars and help out a small business owner as well and just get the designs ready to go. While we're only gonna be focusing on the carve, really, I am gonna take you step by step on how I prepared the material, how I got ready to carve this tray. So I hope that that extra information is helpful as well. Once we get the prep work out of the way, I will be taking you into Carb I Create and showing you how I prepared it within Carb I Create to carve this out as a tray. And lastly, it wasn't a perfect carve right from the get-go. So stick around until the end because I will share at least two tips that I think you should keep an eye out when you do this project. If you are liking the content and getting value out of these videos, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment, even if it is just an emoji because all that helps with the algorithm. I appreciate you guys, and let's go ahead and jump into this video. For this project, I'm just using pine plywood from Home Depot. I probably would have used edge glue panels, but my Lowe's is farther away from Home Depot and I didn't want to make the trip, so I just used what I thought was easiest. I would suggest edge glue panels if you are wanting to try this out though. Sorry about the brightness here. I'm still working out the kinks on this new camera. Since my CNC has a cutting area of 30 by 30, approximately, I needed to rip this into two sections to allow for it to fit on my CNC. I think it's time for a new blade because I was having some difficulties cutting through this entire piece. Whereas in the past, my saw would have easily eaten this softwood up. Note to self, wear a mask. I thought since I was outside in an open area, I would be good without a mask, but that's a lot of dust. I'm using 320 grit sandpaper here to prep the surface for the carve. After sanding, I added a coat of polyurethane with this old foam brush I had. My thought here is that if I added a coat of polyurethane, it would reduce the tear out during the carve. And note to self again, buy more foam brushes. Since I'm going to carve the tray out of the material, I ended up adding some spacers between the material and my fence just to give myself some room and not worry about my end mill carving into my fence. I secured this material with some one and a quarter inch brad nails. For this project, we're gonna be using some brand new 1 8 inch down cut end mills from Sky One CNC. So go check them out if you're interested and finding more about these end mills. I'm also going to be using a 60 degree V-bit from Sky One CNC as well. With my end mill inserted into the router, I zeroed my X, Y, and Z axis. You're going to want to stick to the end of this video where I go over my findings or my tips for you in the future and how I'm going to run this project in the future because I think this is an area where it can be improved on. So let's go ahead and jump into Carbide Create and let's set this project up now. All right, guys, so jumping into Carb I Create, the very first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and, and set up the dimensions of your uh, material that you're going to be carving into, and that is done in the job setup screen. So with nothing selected, we're going to come over here to the left-hand side, and we're, and we're going to click on this gear, and that is the job setup screen, and we're going to click on that, and we get the job setup screen. Since I cut my plywood down to two different pieces, the first piece that I'm going to carve on is a piece that is 24 inches wide by 17.875 inches tall. So go ahead and enter the dimensions of the material that you're carving into. Go ahead and also enter the information that is remaining here, such as thickness, uh, how you're going to set your zero, where you're going to set your X and Y zeros, and just this other information here. Once you have that done, go ahead and click on OK. Now this grid is the actual representation of the material that you're going to be carving into. In my grid, you can see the final design is ready to go, as well as these pumpkins that I'm going to be carving out. But let me show you how I got to this final design. The next thing that you want to do after you get your grid set up, you want to go ahead and import your file with the design that you're going to carve. In this case, it's going to be this Santa tray, Snacks for Santa tray. So what you got to do is just click on import and go ahead and find the file that you're wanting to carve. Once you import it, you're going to see your design on your screen, but it's not going to be the final size of your tray, or for example, it's not going to be the final dimensions that you're going to want to carve. So this is where we're going to start resizing and preparing for our carve. So I want my tray, my final tray, to be 16 by 12. 
16 inches wide by 12 inches. Uh, that, that's the final dimensions of the tray. How do I make sure that the design fits within a tray of that size? To achieve that, we have to create a rectangular vector. This is going to represent our tray. So you can go ahead and create a vector of any size, a rectangular vector of any size, and we're going to update the dimensions here. The width is going to be 16 and the height is going to be 12 in my particular example. You can go ahead and make this whatever you want. Now this is representing the tray, the final dimensions of the tray. So far we have two different dimensions and two different things. We have the grid which represents the actual material that we're carving from or carving into. This rectangular vector is the representation of the tray that we're going to carve from this representation here of our material. And now we're going to resize our design to fit within our tray. So go ahead and select your design. We're going to come over here to the scale option, click on that, and we're going to click and hold on one of these squares and we're going to drag it down and in. Go ahead and click done. This may take a couple tries, but you want to essentially resize it to kind of fit within this rectangular space. So right now it's still a little bit too big, so I'm going to do that again. Okay, so this looks good. So now how do I center this? So with my design selected, I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the rectangular vector. I'm going to now have both selected. I'm going to click on this align vectors option and then I'm going to click on the align horizontally, vertically. And that centers the design within the rectangular tray. So as I'm looking at this design, the design does fit within my tray, but it is a little bit too close to the edge for my liking. So I'm going to resize it again, and then I'm going to recenter it again. So design selected, I click on scale. I'm going to click on this one over here now and resize it just a bit. And go ahead and just play with it until you get it to the size that you like. I'm, go I'm going to try this one for now. I'm going to then select shift again and click on the rectangular vector, align vectors, horizontally, vertically. And that looks pretty good right there. That gives me a little bit more wiggle room here on the edges. And I'm going to offer a tray with the option to include handles. So this allows me to have a little bit extra space here on the sides to include those handles if I want to. So that is the process that you're going to follow to get your design to fit within the dimensions of the tray that you want to carve. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because this is just an example. I already have my final uh, tray up here. So now let's go ahead and talk about the toolpaths. For this particular job, I'm going to have two different toolpaths. I'm going to have my design as a single advanced V-carve toolpath. And the second toolpath is going to be a contour toolpath on this out outer vector here, this rectangular vector. It's going to carve out the tray from the larger piece of material using the contour toolpath. So let's go ahead and talk about those a little bit more. With your design selected, you're going to click on Advanced V-Carve and go ahead and click on Use Current Selection. Let me go ahead and cancel this one out actually and let's talk about the one I have already created. For this particular job, I used a 1 8 inch end mill. The initial settings that I used were 80, 90 for the plunge and feed rate, RPM at 18,000. The same settings were used for the plunge and feed rate for the 60 degree V-bit, 80, 90. My initial max depth, the first time I tried to run this, was 0 0.04, okay, 0 0.04. And I'm going to show you some live videos on why I changed it to 0 0.08. When it comes to this outside vector, we need to set up tabs prior to setting up our toolpath. So with the vector selected, we're going to come over here to the lower left-hand corner or lower right-hand side, and we're going to click on this Edit Tabs option, and we're going to click on the vector to create our tabs. It is going to secure our tray to the material so that it doesn't go flying out as it's carving. With our tabs created, we're now going to keep this vector selected and we're going to click on toolpaths and we're going to select contour toolpath and use current selection. Let me go ahead and show you the settings that I used for this one. I used a 201 quarter inch end mill. I used a plunge rate of 65, feed rate of 75, RPM at 18,000. You can go ahead and duplicate these if you'd like. My max depth, I use stock bottom, which is 0.75, which is the thickness of the material. Since I am using an upcut bit, an upcut bit tends to tear out the edges or the top of the material. So to reduce that a bit, I'm going to use a start depth of 0.05. It makes the end mill plunge into the material to 0.05 inches and starts its carve there. My max depth for this carve is the thickness of the material. So I'm going to use stock bottom, which is 0.75. 
the offset direction that I want is outside right because I want the entire dimensions of my tray. If I were to do inside left, you can see that the path that the end mill will take is on the inside of the vector and we're reducing the final dimensions of the tray. Same thing with no offset, it's going to carve on the line, on the vector line, and we're still going to reduce the final dimensions of our tray. So we want the entire tray to be that 12 by 16, so we need to select outside right. If I wanted to, I can change the width and the height of these tabs, but I typically don't update this. With those set up, let's go ahead and jump into the first video montage. I say first video montage because as they were starting to carve, I didn't really like this 0 0.04 max depth. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why I think this happened. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first video montage. First off, sorry for zooming in and out, but I wanted to get you guys some good shots and show you that the material was not flat all around. The car was shallower on the left than it was on the right side. So this caused me to quickly stop the job and go back to Carbide Create and update the max depth. So let me show you how that's done real quick. All right, jumping back into Carbide Create, let me show you how I edited only the max depth. So with your advanced V Carve toolpath here selected, you can go ahead and right click on this line and you're going to edit the operation. And you're going to come in here and update this. Again, this was 0.4 originally. I changed it to 0.08. Go ahead and click OK and save your toolpath again and go ahead and upload this toolpath. To be able to upload only the advanced VCAR toolpath, you have to make sure that this contour toolpath is disabled. So I'll disable it now. Let's go back to the video montage and see how this carves out. Since the material wasn't flat to begin with, it didn't really matter if I updated the max depth. The carb was still going to be shallower on the left hand side than it was on the right hand side of the material. Regardless, I went with it and I was able to get a better carb. Not perfect, but better. Let me share with you some real-time thoughts on this carve. All right, guys, so it just finished carving, and this is my real-time review of what I think this came out like, what I think it looks like on plywood. I went with plywood simply because it was at the Home Depot. I didn't want to drive about 25 to 30 minutes to Lowe's to get my normal edge glue panels. So we're trying it out. And my initial review is that I don't entirely like it because you know it's obviously plywood it's layers upon layers of wood and material glued together and after you get to a certain depth you're going to start seeing different types of material different types of wood um, showing underneath and that's exactly what happened you could take a look at this deer you see that deer has uh, nice plywood here on top but then the head has uh, some more material underneath that is not necessarily that that wood look but here's where the silver lining is. I'm going to paint this black. I'm going to paint the text. Everything carved is going to be black. So it might not actually make a big difference. So that's kind of what I'm, the hope that I'm holding on to. That since I'm going to paint this, it may be all right. So let's go ahead and, and do that now. Before actually painting, you'll need to do some cleanup. I used a toothbrush to loosen up some of the fuzzies on the board. I also used my shop back to get rid of some of the straggling dust. And lastly, in order to make these look a little bit nicer, I used my Ryobi chamfer bit to add a slight chamfer to the edges. You need to get this set if you're just wanting to do some minor decorative edges. An affiliate link is in the description below if you want to pick one up. With all that done and out of the way, I used my orbital sander to sand down the leftover tabs on the edges as well. When it came to painting, I thought I was going to be able to paint the design and then wipe away any excess paint away with a rag. But the car was too deep to be able to do that. So I ended up painting outside the carb as well, and then sanded away the surface paint. Once you sand away the surface paint, it's going to look nice, except that it'll have this cloudy appearance. And no matter how much you wipe away, it won't go away. So you need to use compressed air and an air gun to blow away all the fine dust that has settled in the design. To seal this tray, I used some spray Rust-Oleum clear gloss. Let's take a look at this final product before going into some of the tips on this project.
well, that's the final project and I'm relatively happy with how it turned out, but I do have two tips that I wanna share with you and I'll go over them really quickly because we're already at a very long video. So tip number one is set your Z0 using a V-bit. On my very first run, I used the 1 8 inch end mill to set my X, Y, and Z zeros. And there was something going on with the system with Carbide Create and Carbide Motion. It just didn't work out and I could tell that it wasn't really carving correctly. It was carving well enough, but I knew at the time it wasn't carving as I thought it should be carving, especially when you saw the differences in the heights in the different letters. But when I set my Z0 with the 60 degree V bit, all that went away. Also, one thing that I have to keep in mind is that I did my two extra carves on a separate day and I had a whole reinitialization. I turned it off and turned it back on. So I think that may have cleared out whatever was wrong the very first time. But what I want you to take away from this is really that you should set your Z0 at least with the 60 degree V bit that'll get you the best outcome. Secondly, slow down on this carve. When I first initially set up my carves, I used some of the settings that I used for my rustic flags and that was way too fast. It was really just burning through that material really fast and I was losing some of the detail. So I actually manually slowed it down by four clicks at the 10% reduction. So I believe that's really 40% that I reduced it, but I don't know, you math whiz, let me know. So here are the settings that actually worked out for me. For the 1 8 inch end mill for the pocket part, I used a plunge rate of 80 and a feed rate of 60. RPM at 18,000. For the 60 degree V bit, I used a plunge rate of 65 and a feed rate of 45. RPM at 18,000. All the other stuff was left as default and that worked out for me. So those are the two tips that I would recommend for you guys to keep in mind. One last thing before you guys go, make sure to click on your video right now because as you saw, I was also carving some of the pumpkin decor that I did in a previous video, but I resized them and I was going too fast in the setup process and some errors were made. So let me share those errors and how I fixed it in that video. So I'll see you guys there.